What's the scariest thing that happened to you when in someone else's house? I once spent the night at a friend's house. His drunken uncle shook me awake, and then my friend as well with all the noise he was making. I opened my eyes stolted to see a gun to my face and he demanding who the f I was. I was scared speechless and just looked at my friend hoping hex chip in for me. He did. He said, uncle, that's my friend. Sure, uncle, that's my friend. His uncle then put it down and just walked away, as if nothing had happened. He was drunk. I was house sitting for an aunt of mine. While she was on holiday, she told me there was a leak in the lounge area, but it was fixed, so if there were any issues to let her know. A massive storm happened a couple nights in. I heard some trickling in the early hours, so I went to go check that there wasn't a leak. The entire wall was flooding with water, like an actual waterfall. Turns out the spouting was blocked, and the water was just forcing its way through the cracks in the wall. I knew it wasn't my fault, but it was so terrifying watching someone's house fall apart on your watch, just piling towels on the floor, and shifting furniture to keep everything dry. We once had a pipe burst in the garage, while my parents were out of town. Fortunately my grandpa lived nearby, and helped me shut the water off and clean up most of it. It was pretty worrisome at the time. But your story makes me realize just how many things went right there. What was the aftermath of your flash flood? Did anybody come to help you sort it out? I was at this stranger's house to give him some money for accidentally hitting him on his bike. I was also on a bike and the first thing I notice is that his house is really dark. Not in that his lights weren't on. His house didn't have lights at all. No ceiling lights or lamps or anything. Homeboy legit used a flashlight around his own house to get around and find things next thing I know. This guy who I've spoken maybe 100 words or less to is showing me a straight up two handed sword and matching dagger that are both razor sharp. This is one of those people who have a harder time being quiet than thinking of things to say. And next thing you know I've been into every room in his place and met his pet parrot the size of a ducking eagle. The reason I was there in the first place was to replace a handmade Italian seat for his bike. And he ended up giving me a pair of $30 gloves. The old gloves that got a few scratches on them when I hit him. 5 to 10 high end protein power bars and a glass of strawberry lemonade. Definitely a strange experience. I wasn't in the house, but just outside it. I went to visit my paternal grandmother at her house. She kept the door locked, so she had to come over to unlock it when I arrived. Her living room has large windows that overlook the street and you can even see the door from there, so I could easily see her, and she could see me. My grandmother was frail, and suffered from arthritis, and in fact she passed not long after this. As she was walking to the door she fell down in the living room. I had no key to the house, and I was freaking out. I had no idea what to do. I was ready to freaking break the living room window in, or call 9. Double one then she somehow managed to climb back up using furniture, to prop herself back to a standing position and open the door. After that day I demanded a key to the house from my parents. I hate to think what would have happened if she didn't miraculously get back up. I felt so helpless, nearly as hopeless as the time my maternal grandfather fell crossing a busy street and traffic was starting back up down the street. At least that time I was able to prop my grandfather up and carry him over to the side of the road before the cars reached us. Moral of the story, watch for your elders falling. The first time meeting my boyfriend's family, who live in another country, we stayed in his old attic bedroom. In the middle of the night, he reaches over and shakes me awake. Huh. I mumble and he says, SHHH. Be very still. I think there is someone else in the house. I lay motionless, thinking that someone has broken in, and I'm about to be psycho murdered. Listening to the sounds of the old creaky attic, convinced every gust of wind is a footstep. He puts his arm around my head, covering my ears. I don't move for hours in fear. Until I hear him snoring. And that was the night I discovered, for the first time, he talks in his sleep. Edit, thanks for the silver. To celebrate, I'll share one of the, many, other stories of his sleep talking. We were in bed discussing things we need to pick up at the store. I was making a mental note, so. Eggs, milk, bread. I think that's all. Anything else? He goes, oh, 
can you add rope to the list? I go yeah, sure. A few seconds pass. Wait, what do we need rope for? For the net, he says. Cool. What net? You know, the net for the trap. What trap? The trap for Vince Vaughn. We have to stop him. Stop him before he kills us. I was watching a friend's kids when I was in the army. I was crashed out on the couch early one morning when the door flung open and three kids that didn't lie there entered the house. The one in front had a gun. They were making a beeline for the kids bedrooms and had not noticed me on the couch. Scared as shit but not gonna let them just kill the kids I was watching I jumped up and barreled into the lead kid and took the gun. They were screaming and the kids I was watching came running out into the front room. Turns out it was a BB gun. The kid with the gun had just received it as a gift and wanted to show the kids I was watching. The visiting kids had been told by the resident kids that their aunts were away for the weekend, so they just barged in. Of note they were all like 13, so it wasn't exactly hard to take the BB gun. Still scared she sheet out of me. I had hallucinations from a fever while staying over at a friend's and thought the dad was just downstairs screaming all night. It was like living through a horror movie. I still have nightmares about it almost 20 years later. The fever was so bad I had a seizure the next day. When I was around 11 years old I got exploding diarrhea all over my best friend's bathroom. I got very close with her mom that night because I had no idea what to do and she came and helped me clean it up. We grew apart after we graduated high school, but she still reminds me of it sometimes. Now it's funny, but it was traumatizing at the time. I was spending the night at a friend's place in early high school. We were taking a walk around the block and turning onto her street when her little sister runs out of their house and screams bloody murder. She starts running for us, yelling he's killing her, friend's main. He's killing her. We all run to the house, where the mom is getting beaten by the stepdad. It was a scary night for sure. About 14 years old, sleeping over at my friend's house, and in the middle of the night we heard some rustling around in her enclosed patio, which was adjacent to the living room we were sleeping in. We shrugged it off, because she had two very active outdoor cats who generally slept in the patio. When we woke up the next morning and went out there to eat breakfast, we saw the screen door had been slashed and several pieces of furniture, TV, ETC, were gone. So the rustling we heard in the middle of the night were actually burglars. Not sure if they knew that several teenage girls were in the living room, but still freaks me out a bit when I think about it. Slept over at my friend's house one summer night during high school. Woke up to his mom calling out to him because his stepdad was unresponsive and passed away during the night. I was 11 year and at my friend's house, his parents and all of his siblings were home. Everyone but his dad was in the front room of the house. His dad was doing yard work in the backyard. I got up to go to the bathroom and while passing the back door saw that my friend's dad was on a ladder with an electric tree trimmer. Before I looked away and continued on, his dad fell off the top rung of the ladder and crashed hard on the ground. The tree trimmer was still somehow on and landed next to his body. The trimmer was going full horror movie and slowly moving towards him and he was not getting up. I'm the only one who saw this hat so I yelled, friend, friend's mom, your dad fell, come quick, and ran outside to pick the trimmer up and move it away. By the time I turned it off and started focusing on him, everyone else was outside. We helped him up. The mom took him to the hospital for back pain and a mild concussion. The older siblings watched us while they were gone, and everyone was very thankful I had to pee. Edit, it was scary to me, because I did not know what to do, and acted on adrenaline and instinct. The fall was also pretty intense looking. I thought I saw a guy die. My friend when I was around 10 years old used to talk about a ghost in his house that would turn on the radio in the kitchen when you left the room called bullshit. Well about a month after, I'm waiting on him to get out of the shower, and am in the kitchen having a snack. As I open the cabinet, the radio behind me turns on. I jumped, turn it off, then remember the story, was afraid to go to the kitchen after that. Scary, but only happened the once to me. 
His mom didn't want to throw it out, or move it in fear of angering whatever it was. Not sure whatever happened to that radio. Stayed with my BF and his parents for a few weeks. One night, they left me home alone for a few hours. I decided to take a bath. Ventilation fan is on full blast. Door is closed. Water is running. So I don't hear the beeping. When I turn the tap off, I hear alarms blaring. And a robotic voice saying fire. 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 And someone is banging on the front door. I run downstairs in a towel. While calling up my BF. Neighbor is at the door. Because he heard the alarm. He has no idea who I am. Alarm company couldn't get a hold of anyone. So they called the authorities. Cop cars, ambulance, and fire trucks show up. Neighbors all crowd on the lawn. I'm still in a ducking towel. Firefighters conclude the steam from the bath. Set off the alarm. I die of humiliation. And never take a bath there again. Age 6. 8 Aish. Slept over at a friend's house with my little brother. Her father woke us all up in the middle of the night. Had us bundle up. And loaded us in the family minivan. He drove to a gas station, and talked the whole way about how a bakery exploded behind their house. He said the resulting gases and such could kill us, so we had to try, and drive as far away as possible. They were also our next door neighbors, so I was worried about our parents safety. At the gas station, our friend's mom bought us snacks, while he canvassed the area. I told her I didn't hear any explosion, and asked about my parents. She must have called them from a payphone during the snack run, because they pulled up a few minutes later to take us home. I was, of course, terrified to go home. Later, our parents sat us down to explain that our friend's father was sick with something called schizophrenia that makes him hallucinate. Edit, thank you for my first silver. I was a freshman in college when I spent Christmas with my high school buddy who didn't go with his family out of town. I went to his kitchen to get a drink, when I looked out his kitchen window, and saw two figures jumping his fence. Luckily I saw them, before turning on the light, so they didn't see me. I quietly told him to get ready to call the cops, when I saw them making their way to his door. Without thinking I ran to the door, and opened it and yelled, LAPD, freeze. And luckily the two figures got scared and ran away. Thinking back on it, they sounded really young, and they were probably just gonna ding darn ditch the place or something. But to be safe I stayed with him, until his family came home. When I was like 8 or 9 I was at a relative's house for a family gathering, when one of my distant relatives flipped out, and grabbed a kitchen knife. I don't remember the details, but I'm pretty sure he was threatening people. I remember being ushered into a side room with everyone else, and being cramped in there for like a minute or two just listening, while a few male relatives who had remained outside with the guy encircled him, got him to calm down, and disarmed him. I learned later, that the dude's brain was like partially fried or something from drug abuse. Never saw him at any family gatherings again after that. I was 18 and my friend and I were alone at her house. Her parents were going through a nasty divorce and her dad, who had anger problems, was not allowed to come near the house, because the mom had a restraining order. He ended up banging on the door, and trying to break in, since he knew the mom wasn't home. We hid in my friend's room with a samurai sword, while she called her mom to come home. I was cat sitting for some family friends. As I approached the house one evening, I noticed a light was on that hadn't been on that morning. I walked in the front door, and yelled up the stairs, but didn't hear anything. There were small things, that had been moved around, a knife on the counter and some trinkets, etc, but nothing was missing except the cat, it never came running for its food. I checked all the rooms, but no sign of the kitty, I even checked the fridge, and noticed the pepperoni had been moved from the shelf to the drawer. Why did the cat burglar move the damn pepperoni? Well it turned out that the family had a maid that I didn't know about and she had accidentally closed the cat in a closet 